What are alt clouds and why are they changing the cloud game? Let's talk about it. So welcome to the Cloud Computing Insider. This channel explores the ins and outs of cloud computing without an agenda, our following into the narrative set by big tech marketing. We look at what works, what does not, and the actual value of this technology in a balanced information forward way. If that interests you, please subscribe, like, and comment. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, b geek. Let's get started. So what are alt clouds? And actually it's spelled capital A, capital L, capital T clouds. I don't know why, but that's the way I'm uh, seeing it spelled out there. Well, it refers to alternative cloud providers that are not the big three providers, not AWS, not Microsoft, and not Google. And it can be actual clouds or things you would leverage as a service, uh, such as CoreWeave and some of the other cloud providers that we talked about here on this channel, or they can be on-prem resources, such as private clouds, even managed service providers, which basically function like on-prem, and co-location providers. So it's anything that's different and kind of moving away from the big three providers and all the you know cost and some of the complexity uh, that we have to deal with the big three providers. It's not necessarily moving away from them entirely. I think the big three cloud providers are always going to have a role in these architectures, but it's looking at alternatives that are going to provide more cost efficiency, more sovereignty of data, more control, and the big thing is the ability to bring more value back to the business, and enterprises have been waiting, waiting for that for the last 15 years. So the current landscape uh, is reach is changing itself. So there's a shift beyond hyperscalers that are undergoing right now. Enterprises are moving away from relying solely on hyperscale cloud providers. And they're looking at these alternatives such as regional clouds, sovereign clouds, private clouds, and GPU as a service platforms, and doing so because they see the value of this technology in an era where we're not necessarily getting what we thought we should be getting out of the big three hyperscalers that are out there. So this is being driven through the need to drive business value. So why now? Well, the reemergence is happening due to enterprise demand for cost efficiency, regional privacy, compliance, operational control, and specialization. You know, for example, regional options such as OVH Cloud and Genesis Cloud prioritize EU data sovereignty, while private clouds allow businesses fully physical, full physical control over their infrastructure. Also, rapid innovation in the AI and machine learning area are driving a lot of this as well. So specialized GPU as a service platforms like HyperStack, Lambda Labs, or RunPod cater specifically to workloads like large-scale AI training and large language model development or high-performance computing. So these use cases are increasingly sensitive to cost and flexibility, and businesses are looking for cheaper alternatives out there based on what the larger cloud providers are charging these days. So this is really a business opportunity that emerged out there in the technical field where they realize that they can offer specialized niche providers and not necessarily try to compete against the, uh, the larger cloud providers to do everything that they do, but do a portion of it and, and do it very well and have a nice little niche in the market in a role they're going to play. Sovereign clouds, for example, the ability to specialize in providing cloud services that are, that are customized for a particular uh, country or region. And private clouds that are able to do so, they're able to provide basic cloud services in an on-prem system where you can maintain more control. In some cases, this provides more security and also a cost advantage. Typically, hardware is going to be less expensive than clouds you're leveraging as a service. So huge advantages in doing that. And so that's why we're seeing this emerged. And remember, we talked about uh, a few shows back that the Cloud market is changing a bit. In other words, we're seeing an explosion in the use of cloud, typically driven by AI, but other factors are there as well. But we're not necessarily seeing the rise in market share within the big three providers. That doesn't mean they're not growing. They certainly are. But as we saw last quarter, uh, they haven't grown at the pace I think everybody thought they would be growing, and certainly they are investors. And so they had short quarters. I'm sure they'll fix it in subsequent quarters, but the reason that's happening is because the 
enterprises are seeing alternatives to them and they're leveraging those alternatives. So their market share, their acceleration in the market is slowing down a bit. That's all that's happening. So the key trends driving adoption would be number one, cost optimization. Hyperscalers offers come with significant hidden or indirect costs, as we talked about on the show, in contrast to providers like Genesis Cloud, Vast AI, or Nimbulous that offer higher competitive, that offer highly competitive pricing with pay-as-you-go or on-spot instance pricing models for users focused on AI or rendering tasks. Enterprises with high and predictable workloads are increasingly adopting private clouds to reduce operational costs over time. When we say predictable workloads, because that means we're not going to have necessarily a workload that's going to expand its compute, uh, its, its compute needs or expand its storage needs. Uh, and so it's pretty easy to figure out how many resources we're going to need. And so if we're able to uh, meet those requirements, with an on-prem based solution, typically that's gonna be cheaper. With a private cloud solution, typically that's gonna be cheaper. And that's what's attracting enterprises right now. Cost is everything. So also control and flexibility. Private clouds or sovereign clouds allow organizations to customize their setup completely from CPU, GPU configurations to storage solutions, enabling a tailored approach to workloads. So they do it their own way. Sovereign clouds ensure compliance with strict local regulations like GDPR for the European regions, especially in industries like finance and healthcare that are heavily regulated. You know, for example, Genesis Cloud offers EU sovereign cloud services for a compliance for the critical sector. So in other words, if you have a business in the EU and you're concerned about compliance uh, because there's heavy fines if you run afoul of the law, then leveraging these sovereign cloud providers may be a better choice because they're going to be more aware of local country laws that you have to adhere to. Another factor would be regulatory landscape and data resiliency demands. Governments and enterprises have growing concerns about data leaks, privacy breaches, and reliance on U.S. hyperscalers. Sovereign clouds like Scaleway and OVH Cloud based in Europe are gaining momentum because they view them as having a better role in understanding what they're dealing with in terms of laws and regulations and understanding that in some cases the data needs to be kept in the country and using a cloud that has no point of presence outside of the country is typically going to be your safest bet. So in some cases, European companies are going with that, uh, not only for the compliance capability and the fact that they're more localized for the countries that they live in, but also the cost reasons. So they're providing cost advantages and compliance advantages, and for them, that's going to be a winning. That's going to be a winning ticket in, in moving out, out out with an alt cloud. Another factor would be specialization uh, with providers. HyperStack, for example, specializes in high-performance GPU clouds with NVIDIA H100 GPUs tailored for. AI ML workloads, why RunPod excels in serverless GPU scaling for nonstop AI inference. So what they done is they said, we're going to take this particular sector of the market, which is going to be supporting AI workloads. We're not going to do anything else. We're not going to provide um, access to build general purpose applications. We're going to provide you access to resources you need to build very high performance uh, AI based systems that are typically going to leverage GPUs and do so more effectively. So we're seeing lots of cloud offerings out there across Core Weave being kind of the, the main one out there that just IPO'd that are able to follow that niche and they're able to provide AI services and access to AI based processing at a much reduced cost. So what are the use cases for the alternative cloud providers? Well, AI ML and high performance GPU workloads would be the big one. Platforms like Lambda Labs and Papers, Paperspace provide advanced GPU options, you know, such as access to the NVIDIA chips with flexible pricing and pre-configured environments for use cases like AI model training, large language model fine tuning, and rendering tasks. So, and they do so at a great discount. So they provide also enterprise grade private clouds, such as the AI private clouds that are out there now, support large scale and, and consistent AI workloads with complete access and security. So two directions there. Number one, you're leveraging a specialized GPU-based cloud, which is which you can leverage on demand, you know, such as CoreWeave and Lambda Labs, 
where it basically functions like AWS and provides these systems as a service out of the open internet, typically. And then you have private cloud instances. In other words, specialized AI private clouds offered by you know, Dell and NVIDIA and HPE and, 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 uh, and Broadcom VMware out there, where they're in essence bundled AI solutions where you're getting the ecosystem, the entire environment, which is coupled to a hardware platform. And they show you the hardware platform along with the AI, AI platform configuration. So where public cloud providers can be, you know, kind of the easy button for AI because we can get into their environments and we can configure any number of systems for our particular purposes. They do so, but are trying to replicate that in an on-prem system. In many cases, enterprises are finding that to be an attractive alternative, uh, again, because control and again, because of the cost advantages in doing that. So why are enterprises moving in this direction? The big thing would be cost predictability and transparency. Hyperscalers, the existing ones today, the big three, often emphasize extreme scalability, but lack cost visibility. Alternate providers like RunPod or Genesis Cloud use granular billing models offering pricing transparency and savings for targeted use case. In other words, they're approaching this with a niche. We do this really well and we're gonna charge you the least amount of money. The other would be avoidance of vendor lock-in. Enterprises worry about being locked into a single hyperscaler ecosystem. Leveraging multi-cloud strategies or private alternatives ensure freedom to innovate without dependency on a particular proprietary API. Again, if you're using the cloud native features, you're more or less going to be very stuck with that cloud provider. It's gonna be a very difficult thing to move off to another provider or another technology. And then finally, sustainability goals. Providers like OVH Cloud, Genesis Cloud, and Data Crunch emphasize eco-friendly data centers and renewable energy usage, aligning with ESG-driven enterprises goal, enterprise goals. So if, if that's what your motivation is, then you can find it in some of these alt cloud providers. Enhanced security posture, private and sovereign cloud setups ensure higher security for mission-critical workloads, with enterprises maintaining visibility and control over configurations. Because you control it, you can see it. Typically, enterprises determine that that's going to be a better security configuration for them. And ultimately, these models addressed growing cybersecurity concerns. The big thing that I hear from my clients is that this technology is growing very quickly. They're concerned about the vulnerability of some of this technology and putting stuff in hyperscalers out there. Why I don't think it's that big of a deal because um, we haven't seen the breaches where it's you know going to be a huge amount of risk when you're putting stuff in a hyperscaler. You're able to get to the same sort of advanced security and cybersecurity frameworks within these alternative cloud providers. And again, you're able to do it at a much reduced cost. And I think the, the, the kicker there, if you're able to spend less on the security, you're able to buy more security. And so if you're able to buy more security, then you're able to have better security. In the cloud, you're going to have to pay for your security. You're going to, and you have a shared responsibility model. These are no different. Uh, but again, if I'm able to do it at half the price, I'm able to use the advanced security systems that may, I may, may not be able to afford on the hyperscalers. And so that's kind of an economics of how security works. And those in the business know that in security, the world of security, you kind of get what you pay for. Well, here you can get more for less money, which is going to make you more secure. So what does this mean for the cloud market? Well, rise of niche players. The growing role of GPU-focused platforms or sovereign providers signals increased fragmentation in enterprise cloud spending. Hyperscalers may lose portions of their market to niche players, excel excelling in high demand areas where real-time AI inferences, training, and regional compliance may be important. So the public cloud providers are losing out to these sort of specialized offerings in some cases. Also, customization is a standard. Businesses are no longer satisfied with one size fits all solution. The ability to tweak configurations and control policies is defining the choice of cloud providers. That's more going to be a requirement on the enterprise's shopping list out there. And then decentralized cloud ecosystems, a future where hybrid solutions combining private, sovereign, and specialized clouds Dominate is emerging with enterprise customizing cloud architectures to enhance agility, reduce costs, and increase security. So a lot of this is really kind of falling in the laps of the alt cloud providers out there. 
the different postures that the enterprises are taking now, the fact of the matter is that we're moving from a cloud-only solution, meaning cloud uh, hyperscalers and moving to the public cloud providers, to a platform that's going to be the most optimized for the workloads and the data sets that we're moving on to these platforms. So gone are the days where we're trying to push everything into AWS, Microsoft, or Google. And we're in the days where we're open to looking at different alternative platforms, including things that are on-prem and some of the specialized cloud providers out there. So 10 years ago, they wouldn't have been a consideration. And I think that's why we saw a normalization in the market. A lot of the smaller cloud providers just went away because they couldn't see them penetrating a market that was dominated by AWS, Microsoft, and Google, who were able to spend billions of dollars on building their infrastructure to provide these, these cloud services. And they're not bad cloud services. It's just where we are in the marketplace, they're too expensive, uh, too bureaucratic, uh, too complex. And I think enterprises are seeing a need not to uh, not to use them for the cost issues and the complexity issues and the control issues. And therefore, they're putting more value on these al alternative providers. And I think that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think if enterprises ex exercise their freedom of choice, they're going to end up getting platforms that are going to be better at bringing value back to the business, which is what it's all about. So we can finally get to a state where we're leveraging cloud-based platforms mixed with on-prem-based platforms, and we're saving money at the same time. And that was always the objective. We just haven't got there for the last 15 years. So we're trying new things. And I think this one may be the way it works because uh, based on market demands uh, and the fact of the matter is we're leveraging many uh, frag fragmented suppliers, either hardware suppliers or, or cloud computing service suppliers, they're going to provide the best pricing. They're going to provide the best service because they're having to compete what a wider range of competitors, including the hyperscalers. So I think that's going to have an advantage for enterprises and how they consume this technology moving forward. At least we hope so. So all cloud providers are reshaping the industry by addressing previously unfulfilled enterprise needs like cost efficiency, control, compliance, and specialization. The trend underscores a move back to the basics where businesses prioritize what truly matters, flexibility, security, and cost predictability. Platforms like HyperStack, OVH Cloud, and Genesis Cloud are positioning themselves as indispensable players for enterprises and rethinking traditional cloud strategies. So no longer is it going to be a default answer that's going to be AWS, Microsoft, or Google are all three or all, are two of, two of them, or even some of the second tier providers out there like Oracle and IBM, even though those are going to be basically alt clouds as well. Um, it's going to be looking at a vast array of heterogeneous options and the ability to pick from those options to find the best of breed technology that's going to align best to the business. And at the end of the day, that's what we need to be thinking. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my other videos on this channel. Also check out my InfraWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. Also my other YouTube show, AI Insights and Innovation on the Cube Research YouTube channel. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, you guys stay very safe, very, very safe. See ya.